Welcome to the Little Surgical TV. Today, we really have an honor to uh, um, online the webcast that today we have an honor from the Ukraine Little Surgery Grand Round, in which today the main topic about the management of the military neurotrauma, in which is really like, you know, a main topic right now, and we have ethics for like, you know, the world. So today we have four like, uh, well-known like speakers from uh, different countries. Um, so let me introduce Dr. Um, Samer Hurst. Uh, he's from the, he's the famous neurosurgeries in which he specialized in the neurovascular and I have like follow him and I like uh, read, uh, he wrote the textbooks and uh, I saw uh, his, a lot of his videos and then I follow him. So he's going to give a, He's going to be the modelers today, but um, so as Doctor Doctor uh, Haas is not here today, maybe we will start with our first like speakers. Is Doctor Adnan Abdullah Awar Alawadi? I'm sorry if I pronounce this wrong. So he's from Yemen. He's going to give a talk about the penetrating head injuries. So please welcome Doctor Adnan. Um, our declaration for uh, Dr. Alexander. Dr. Alexander was uh, our mentor in neurosurgical department at the uh, Tauram Modern General Hospital in Ghana. He was passed away before uh, one year. Uh, this be on his uh, soul. He's from Ukraine. Uh, and he gave us a lot of information and teach us very uh, informative information about the uh, peripheral nerve surgery in Yemen. I have no declaration. This, uh, I said that uh, brain penetrating brain injury was the, one of the devastating injuries uh, result from firearms in 14%. And the penetrating brain injury are a major health problem. We are facing in our country dealing to war uh, in war cases or uh, in civilian gunshot injuries. Many deaths are due to gunshot wounds to the which are most lethal. These injuries are uh, included is uh, passing through the central region of the brain, uh, zona vitalis, uh, which include the uh, supracellular and compressing the ventricular third or uh, thalamus and uh, hypothalamus. Fatal trauma is related to the head associated with additional injuries to other parts of the body. Uh, there is a well documented series have a demonstrated decline mortality from severe head injury from 50% in 70s to 60, uh, 36% in 80s and possible even lower in current uh, days. We classified the penetrating head injury or the trauma head injury to either or to severity or to morphology. From the mechanism, we have the closed and penetrating head injury. And by severity, we have, according to Glasgow Coma Scale, to mild, moderate, and severe uh, head injury. And to the morphological type, we have skull fracture or intracranial region, depending on its uh, local or diffuse, epidural, subdural, intracerebral, and mild uh, to diffuse axonal injuries in diffuse type of intracranial region. Penetrating brain injury. Uh, can be caused by gunshot explosion due to sharp nail, by air strike, bombing, etc. And sharp nail object trauma by knife, sword, or scissor, etc. to the brain or to the head. We are classifying the penetrating brain trauma either to penetrating or uh, perforating and tangential brain injuries. In perforating time, we have an inlet and outlet uh, uh, site that pass through and through the brain, which are the most uh, devastating and critical type of brain injury. The other type is, uh, this is uh, one example for the perforating, this is the inlet and this is the outlet. The outlet is mostly larger. And this is the situation of the, another uh, patient, so the inlet and outlet and the outlet, which is the transcranial and trans uh, hemispheric uh, brain injury. 
for the uh, penetrating, we have only a lens. We don't have outlet. Uh, for example, this uh, example from uh, an explosion of pellet with the foreign body inside. This is also one example. This is another example for gunshot to the brain with the bullet still inside the brain part in China. This is also another kind of penetrating brain trauma by scissors starting to the head of one uh, adult male. This is uh, the CT scan of the same patient with the scissors stamp show the metallic foreign body inside the brain in China. I have another case for stabbing of the head by a sword or by a knife to the frontal head. And this is the CT scan of the same patient. This is the metallic foreign body post explosion in a pediatric patient in the frontal area. Still connect. And touching third type of injury, we have penetrating object does not reach the skull, uh, but uh, it uh, may, may can cause uh, uh, an injury to the brain uh, in China. And this is an example for it. A tangent tie to the neck with the, uh, an entry point uh, in the occipital area and output uh, entry in the uh, very auricular area and the exit in the occipital. We have the severe brain edema and the bone loss from the occipital area. The management is a challenging, managing topic which uh, divided in the hospital or at the field. Uh, we will see that in the military uh, uh, hospital, they have uh, less uh, mortality than in uh, civilian uh, casualties because they have the first line, uh, first aid uh, management for penetrating the brain injury. And uh, there is also, they can deal with the mass casualties uh, from, from our side, from uh, in the hospital care. It's a very important to decrease the secondary brain injury and uh, to achieve the maintenance of the airway, optimize oxygenation, ventilation, and cerebral perfusion. This is a guideline for the field management of compact related head trauma, which is uh, published from the Brain Trauma Foundation. And it's, also, uh, it's found in the web, which can be detailed for how to manage. Uh, and, uh, and uh, penetrating brain injury in the field, depending on the gross coma scale, and when time to evacuate from the field or no, and it's depending on the, if there is benefit from the evacuation, rapid evacuation, or to maintain and, uh, and advanced life support in the field before transportation. After transportation of the patient to the emergency department, in the emergency department, you have to keep uh, uh, doing the supportive treatment for the patient, correction of hypertension, hypoxemia, and to uh, deal with the coexisting trauma, control of any associated hemorrhage, and correction of traumatic co coagulopathy, urgency scan, state of neck, and tetanus toxide, uh, uh, neurological consultation, and to avoid excessive steroid or steroid uh, uh, medication in the ER. Surgical management. Surgical management was developed from uh, recent years. In the uh, 18, uh, 18, it was uh, only developed for uh, management by Harvey Koshin, Dr. Harvey Koshin, developed from approach to management of penetrating head injury and advocate complete removal of metallic and bone fragment as well as circum uh, uh, to me and uh, to create rising uh, pressure. This philosophy was uh, dealt with until uh, 1918 during the Israel Lebanon, uh, Lebanon conflict, where it shifted toward the conservative development uh, man uh, maneuver. In most recent conflict in Afghanistan, Iraq war resulted in future reinforcement of surgical management, with, uh, which trended toward daily decompressive and uh, conservative uh, development. Sorry. In 1988, the International Brain Association and then Injury Association and the American Association of Surgery have published a 
uh, guidelines for the management of penetrating brain injury, which was published in uh, 20, uh, 2001, which is uh, a tent for uh, medical and surgical management of penetrating brain cerebral uh, minimum debridement, decompressive, and neuroplasty. This is an example for a simple uh, debridement with uh, decompression and uh, debridement of the brain and neuroplasty. We have some points uh, uh, which has uh, to be dealt with in uh, traumatic brain injury, which have a prognostic factor, including a glass form scale, age, popularity size, and reflex hypertension and CT5. These are all, all are published in the Trauma Health uh, Trauma Foundation, uh, Brain Trauma Foundation, and can be uh, reviewed there. It's uh, out of our topic to be discussed here. But in uh, Harry, we can get that gas coma scale. I have uh, class one evidence that uh, uh, strong relation with decreased gas coma scale with the gas outcome scale is uh, very important. And uh, uh, at the age, there is uh, increased the mortality rate of the gas coma scale rate with increasing the age. And global reflex, if there is absent uh, and fixed dilated pupil with absent bilateral uh, global reflex, is associated with bad outcome and hypertension also and CT funding, which included the uh, brain edema, traumatic subarthritis hemorrhage, uh, blood in the vessel ganglia and the vessel system, or extensive subarthritis hemorrhage, and the uh, official guide for uh, CT scan information about the subarthritis hemorrhage. There is one important thing in uh, mass casualties incidents, how to deal with the mass injury incidents in uh, war, war conflict, in civilian patient or uh, terrorist attack in the civilian patient. Uh, you have uh, a logarithm for management of this uh, patient, depending on the ability of the resources, neurosurgical facilities, and the condition of the patient if the condition of the patient is less than it, just uh, from a scale and uh, have no uh, uh, brain stem reflex or absent corneal reflex to be uh, kept just for observation until uh, if there is improvement or there is indication for surgical uh, intervention like midline shift or uh, uh, the just from a scale it is up to eight, uh, it can be taken for uh, neurosurgical intervention. Our study was dealt, uh, we have done in our uh, institute at Thawra uh, Modern General Hospital at uh, 2017 for three months and observation for uh, six to one year, six months, one year for patient post uh, penetrating uh, brain injury. We are the, have an object for characteristic and pattern of patient with penetrating brain injury. The study relation between admission, graphical scale, and mortality of management and outcome. Patients and methodology and retrospective cases series, descriptive study, uh, in December uh, to March uh, 2018. Uh, we have uh, 51 cases. We depend on the graphical scale, uh, graphical outcome scale category. Uh, death and patient with sensitive state, uh, third degree severe disability, uh, and uh, moderate disability or good recovery. This is the modified uh, drug outcome scale, which was uh, uh, developed in uh, 2020. Our results we have 51 cases, their age range between 2 and 55, with men age of 23 years. Male was 90% of them were male and 10% were female. The mechanism of injury was explosion was 63%, uh, and 92 were from gunshots and uh, about 8% from stab wound to the brain. Uh, perforating injury were uh, about uh, 929, with penetrating injury about uh, 30, uh, 53% and 18% uh, for tangential. Brain injury. Time of arrival, there is the early arrival, about 55% uh, 
which, uh, which is uh, one hour to six hours from time of injury, and the late uh, arrival was more than six hours from time of injury. The glasgocoma scale, most of them were having good glasgocoma scale at 65%, with glasgocoma scale 30 to 15, and 55% uh, were having low uh, glasgocoma scale. The bubble reflex, uh, most are uh, have uh, different uh, presentation from normal to uh, constricted, dilated, non-reactive or dilated reactive bubble. There is some uh, patient with have the unilateral dilated bubble and the other side was normal. Associated injuries, uh, ophthalmic extremities and the chest maxillofacial. Uh, site of injury, the frontal area was the most common, followed by parietal and temporal area. See this kind of finding. Uh, besides skull and neural injury, there is intracerebral hemorrhage, foreign body edema, brain laceration, and subarthronic hemorrhage, pneumocephalus contusion, and uh, so on. The front body uh, type was uh, mostly. Uh, equal between uh, metal and uh, uh, it's what represented by uh, 35 percent and uh, bone by 17 percent, uh, bone and metal, sorry, and uh, bone only on 14 percent. This is the distribution of foreign body. It was distributed either uh, all uh, the three layers in, from the skin up to the deep tissue or only in the deep tissue or superficial in the brain. 88% uh, of our cases were dealt surgically and only 12% were dealt uh, in a conservative manner. The conservative manner also includes any cases what was dealt with uh, skin closure under local anesthesia. If we use uh, a general anesthesia, we describe it as the under operative uh, uh, treatment management. The complication where a CEC uh, was a CEC plague followed by convulsion and deep infection, superficial infection, and hydrocephalus. There is another complication for uh, as uh, re bleeding and uh, re expanding hematoma was uh, in that series of thousands. Most affected group were uh, 21 to 30 years and uh, 11 to 20 years with the uh, uh, expulsion is the most common, followed by the gunshot and the stab wound. Uh, in the gunshot, uh, uh, 20, 11 years to 20 years was the most common affected age. And the uh, expulsion at the most affected age group was 21 to 30 years. This is the distribution between uh, gender. In the female gender, we only find that uh, uh, they have uh, gunshot wound only in female, which are uh, aged from 11 to 20 years. And also in female, we have only expulsion affected. Female patient under 10 years old, 50%, and uh, the other 50% in 20 to 30 years. This is the most uh, type of injury penetrating injury to the brain with perforating injury and penetrating injury were the most common in uh, second uh, age group from 11 years to 20 years with penetrating injury is the most common also in the 21 to 30 years. Here we can show that just uh, common scale was uh, in the, uh, the most common age type from 11 to 20 and 21 to 30 with the most uh, of 10 cases for each, uh, each, each group. The frontal area of the site of the injury, depending to the age of group, uh, in a patient with uh, more than 40 years only have frontal injury and the posterior fossa only was seen in the age from 31 to 40. This is also a table uh, explaining the relation between the age group and the operative type. Uh, 
uh, there is uh, more extensive deployment and minimal deployment were uh, done. More uh, minimal deployment done in 19 patients, which equal to 37.3, and followed by uh, minimal uh, extensive deployment in 17 patients. <clears throat> This is a city finding which correlated with the uh, uh, scan fire, which correlated to uh, midline shift and the grass coma scale, uh, which showed that the subdural hematoma and the uh, subarcanoid midline shift and numerous cephalos had such, uh, such uh, significant statistic relation to city scan finding. On the other side, uh, constricted pupil dilated and reactive or non uh, reactive people were 100% seen in cases with the Roscoma scale less than nine with uh, significant p value. The, so, uh, the overall Roscoma scale were uh, good recovery in 43% and 29% uh, disability. Uh, 14% in severe disability, 4% in vegetative state, and 10% with uh, mortality. There is a significant statistic relation between type operation and Glasgow outcome scale. Only in group with low Glasgow scale, with operated, uh, have been done for them, had a bigger Glasgow scale with a positive uh, or uh, significant statistical p value. This is the relation of the CT scan finding the grass scale, where dural injury and uh, sub uh, subdural hemorrhage and edema midline shift have a significant relation to the grass scale. And uh, relation to CT scan finding to mortality, there is interventricular subdural hemorrhage and venous cells have a positive or a statistical significant value for uh, CT finding related to mortality. In the type of uh, management, we have find that, uh, as we said before, that only in uh, uh, gross coma scale, less than eight operative size will have a strong relation to the gross coma scale. And gross coma scale have uh, good results or uh, better prognostic or good prognostic factor for gross coma scale with 71 for recovery in mild uh, gross coma scale and 11% recovery only in severe glaucoma scale, uh, patients presented the after penetrating brain injury with significant statistical value. Also, there is a more significant relation between the glaucoma scale and mortality. Uh, this is the mortality rate depending on the age group, which uh, shows that uh, mortality only uh, seen in. Uh, 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 age group uh, 10 to 20 or 21 to 30, which are the most common involved in the uh, conflict or in the explosion or in civilian uh, armed fire uh, conflict. This is the relation of verbal size to the plus power outcome scale that we described before, that if the pupil is uh, dilated, non reactive, and absent light effects have a strong relation to the gross scale with a significant uh, p-value. Perforating injury had the worst outcome with all about 7% had a poor recovery compared to 48% poor recovery in penetrating injury with certainly a significant p-value. 60% of mortality were caused by penetrating injury and 50% by perforating injury without significant statistic results. There was no relation between the pupillary side effects to mortality or management type, or no, there is no relation between the management type and mortality, no relation between time of arrival to Glasgow outcome scale or mortality, no relation between the mechanism of injury to Glasgow outcome scale or mortality, 
and the 60% of mortality was both uh, extensive operation. 60% with risk of mortality below is eight. 20% of each minimal and skin closure under local anesthesia, 100% work with risk of care below it. No relation between associated injury and mortality with risk of scale or risk of care with uh, non significant B value. Summary for our study I know this is a long topic, but uh, I will give you my summary. It's a T1 case, 90% were female, male. Uh, their age range between 2 to, uh, and uh, 55, with the main age 23, uh, 63 expo explosion, 29% gunshot, and 8% stab wound. Uh, 39 were aged between 20 and 30 years, followed by age group between 10 and 20 years, with uh, uh, 35%. Explosion was the mechanism for injury in patients less than 10 years. And 53% uh, penetrating, 29% perforating, and 18 times entire type of injury. 55% uh, present early, one to six hours of injury, and 55 with glasscoma scale, 13 to 15, and 35% uh, glasscoma scale below nine. Ural injury, subarthritis, hemorrhage, edema, midline shift had a significant statistical relation to glasscoma scale. And subarthenoid uh, humorate, subdural humorate, midline shift, pneumocephalus had a significant statistical relation to see this kind of finding. The dural injury, subdural humorate, edema, and midline shift had a significant statistical relation to Glasgow outcome scale. Concentric, dilated, reactive, or non reactive pupil were 100% seen in cases with Glasgow coma scale less than nine. The site of injury, 70% were frontal, followed by parietal, and 31 temporal, 16 occipital, and 6% uh, posterior fossa was uh, involved. 88% operated, 33 extensive deployments, uh, 37 minimal deployment, and 18% skin closer under general anesthesia. Complication wise, 10% safe and convulsion. 8% deep infection and 6% superficial infection and 4% had hydrocephalus. 43% had full recovery using RASCO outcome scale, 29% moderate disability, 14% severe disability, and 4% vegetative state and 10% died of mortality cases. 60% of the mortality were caused by penetrating injury while 40% caused by perforating injury without significant statistical results. 80% of the mortality caused uh, cases where uh, with glasgoma scale uh, below 8%, below 8 score. Perforating injury had a worse outcome with only about 7% had a full recovery compared to 48% full recovery in penetrating injury. The better the Glasgow outcome, the Glasgow coma scale, the better the Glasgow outcome scale, uh, 71 for recovery in mild Glasgow coma scale, which is uh, 13 to 15 score, and only 11% recovery in severe Glasgow coma scale, which is uh, less than eight uh, score with significant P value. Significant statistical relation between type of operation and Glasgow coma scale only in group with low Glasgow coma scale. With a minimal operator, with a minimal deprivement operation, had a better Glasgow outcome scale. Our discussion, we have a similar uh, studies which are done in uh, Bolian, was done uh, a study in Turkey for uh, about uh, 442 cases from 1992 up to uh, 2008. There were uh, male, were the very dominant. Their age group uh, was uh, the main age group, uh, main age was uh, 23 years, and uh, their age range between 4, 40, and 84. Time of arrival within uh, two hours, all patients were treated cooperatively, and the uh, sharp pain was the majority. The common site was in the frontal, followed by temporal. Uh, in our site was uh, frontal, then parietal, then temporal. Uh, the mortality was higher in both stereo and the brainstem stem comparison to frontal area. 
it has a mortality rate of about 20 percent in our case it was uh, 10 percent the other study is uh, Alison, it has uh, 28 uh, uh, men age uh, he studied uh, 136 cases the mechanism of injury was uh, done short in 31 and last in the 69 uh, the, the mortality rate was uh, about uh, Seven percent. Other study. Uh, it have uh, a mean age of twenty nine. Um, of the nine patients uh, were victim of suicidal uh, suicide blood. This study was done in Pakistan, and uh, no mortality. The Glasgow outcome scale where uh, nine of sixteen patients had a discharge Glasgow scale of five. Three patients had Glasgow outcome scale of three, and four patients had Glasgow outcome scale of four. This is another uh, study was done in Saudi Arabia by uh, uh, during the Iraqi war, where 20 patients uh, were studied, most commonly located were frontal, and seven patients were barbarical. Uh, admission Glasgow scale was nine, uh, with Glasgow scale between 12 to and three patients between eight and 12 uh, drosophoma scale and two had drosophoma scale less than eight. Most of the mechanism were uh, fragments in 17 cases. The other were bullets. 20, 21 patients have an operative uh, with extensive approaches only uh, and one case with conservative. Mortality rate was 4.5 cases. This is a long study was done in Finland uh, for a long duration from uh, 1968 to 1977 with uh, 123 civilian gunshots, 47 cases, 16% were dead on arrival. It had no cerebral penetration, uh, cerebral gunshot made up to two of all head injury. The causes of wound were accidental assault and the uh, suicide was the most common in 87. Uh, only one of 20 cases were older than uh, 60 and uh, did not die. That, mean, that means that uh, all cases uh, were uh, above 60 were uh, expired except for one case. The overall mortality was uh, neurosurgery uh, treatment was very high, about uh, 79%. Uh, however, there was uh, Scandal 20 uh, death, which may uh, increase the mortality rate with the civilian gunshots, and was estimated to be more than uh, 97. Our conclusion there is a statistical relation between the dural injury edema and midline shift to the CT scan finding and the Glasgow home scale, the Glasgow outcome scale. Concentric, uh, concentric, dilated, reactive, or non reactive pupil were 100% seen in Glasgow less than nine. And uh, 43 had poor recovery using the Glasgow scale, Glasgow outcome scale, and 29 with the disability, 14% severe disability, and four vegetative, and 10 died. 16% mortality were caused by penetrating injury, while 40 percent caused by perforating. 80% of mortality causes were with glasgoma scale. Perforating injury had the worst outcome, and only about 7% had poor recovery compared to 48 poor recovery in penetrating injury with a significant p value. The better the glasgoma scale, the glasgoma scale, the better the glasgoma outcome scale. With the 71 fully recovered in mild glasgoma scale, and only 11% recovered in a severe glasgoma scale patients. Significant statistical relation between type of operation and glasgoma scale, glasgoma outcome scale only in group with low glasgoma scale with minimal operative or minimal development had a better glasgoma outcome scale. Our recommendation for support for penetrating brain injury should be a guideline for management of all penetrating brain injury and should be, should be enforced in all uh, primary health care and uh, emergency departments and uh, field of competence. Penetrating brain injury needs 
patients and metacross planning. Indication for surgery must be clear and if possible, conservative management should be the over like aggressive surgical removal of colon so that rich atrogenic deficit can be avoided. Surgical exploration, if needed, should be done by the expert only and must not be completely had. The type of surgical intervention should be taken carefully depending on the general condition of the patient, indication, pathology, or this time also, you don't forget the ability, availability of the resources, neurosurgical and uh, uh, other. The training for the medical staff for primary care services, how to deal with such injuries at the field of combat, at the emergency medical care department, emergency department. Our surgical care of patients with traumatic brain injury caused by penetrating injury is not optimal. Rapid transportation to hospital and urgent surgical intervention should be should have reduced mortality rates. Conservatively treated patients should be evaluated in well equipped neurosurgical ICU and continuously monitored by intracranial pressure monitoring if needed. More multicenter study for penetrating brain injury included the military civilian patients all over the country. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Anand, for the very amazing presentations and a lot of like uh, amazing case. Um, so I believe that Dr. Summer Hurst is here now. Oh, I don't know if Sam is here. Sam, are you there? Okay, okay. Borlex, go ahead. Um, okay, so um, you can, uh, does you can... anyone have any questions? Maybe you want to um, add a question first? Anyone for the, in the panelists have questions? Or maybe we can wrap up at the end of those, of the presentations, okay? Okay, maybe, okay, so, maybe ask Oleg who he wants to go next, uh, Morlix, maybe, okay? Oleg, can uh, you, who would you wish to go next? I think... Oh, um, is, uh, one moment. Okay. Is uh, Dr. Hotz is here with us or no? Let's see. I don't see him. Uh, Abdullah. Yeah, Samer, are you here? He was here. I'm sorry about this. Okay. Close. Sasha. Da. I am. I am. I'm not. I ready. Okay. okay. Doctor Son. Oh, yeah. Okay. Doctor Son is ready. Okay. Yeah, so please, please started. introduce yourself, and away you go. Let me introduce uh, Doctor. Son, Professor Son, Professor Son, the Chief of Neurosurgery in Odessa uh, University, experienced neurosurgeon, good friend, Vice President of Ukrainian Association. So uh, he deals with the trauma, with military trauma as well, and he wants to present us his uh, cases. Uh, just the case. So, Doctor Son, let us let you please start. Good afternoon, my colleagues. Dear friends, do you see my presentation? Yes, perfect. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm not <laughs> John Bennett. I'm an Atolestone from Odessa. Uh, now Odessa have this view because we have art. Uh, I present two cases of military neurotrauma. Uh, first case, uh, Ukrainian soldier, 20 years old. He received a brain injury due to uh, rocket shooting at the area of the Zmini Island one day before entering to university clinic. This city for uh, entering to cleaning.
neurological examination, lasacoma scale 13, 14, moderate right gemiparesis. Surgery, left resection trepanation, removal of the bone fragments and intracerebral hematoma with brain detritus. The right side uh, metal fragment was not removed. How you see? Oh, sorry. sorry. Post op condition without deterioration. Patient transferred to the rehabilitation center. Secondary cranioplasty is planned. It's after surgery. First day after surgery. Okay. And next case. Ukrainian military pilot received the brain injury during the combat light of the area of this main island one day before entering to the university clinic. CT performed on the day of injury. Neurological examination, glasacoma scale 30-40, meningeal signs, light speech disorders. One day control CT, hematoma enlargement, midline shift to the right and basal system narrowing. Immediately after CT, the condition worsening, glass scale 11, 20, uh, 12, aphasia, hiccups. Immediately left the compressive trepanation. <clears throat> removal in the cerebral hematoma with brain detritus, the bone fragments was not removed. The condition has improved. There is no speech disorders. The patient transferred to the rehabilitation center, secondary cranioplasty planet. Two weeks after surgery, Questions, resection or decompressive? Second, which bone and metal fragments should be removed? 30, is primary cranioplasty necessary? And my conclusion, the resection or decompressive trepanation is used individually for each injury. Not all bone and metal fragments should be removed. Primary or secondary cranioplasty is used individually for each injury. Absolutely necessary, necessary equipment, CT, operation microscope, trepanation system, aspiration, bipolar. Thank you. Glory to Ukraine. Dr. Son, thank you very much. Pollux? Oh, okay. Um, thank you. It's, it's very nice. Uh, so, um, maybe move to uh, another speaker, Dr. Yarosla. Uh, he would talk about the management of the combat peripheral nerve injuries. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Hello, dear colleagues. Thank you for the opportunity to present my work. Uh, unfortunately, this topic is really relevant and actual now, especially in Ukraine. Just uh, give me a few seconds to launch my presentation. It's here and one second to for the screen demonstration 
Hmm? Yeah. Just one second. Uh, Can you see my presentation? Not, not yet, yeah. not yet. Not yet. Start, start again, please. Oh, thank you. So uh, the topic oh, is- management. Your presentation is not showing yet, please. Oh. Can you try again? Yeah, you have to share. Dr. Summer is here. You sure, just one second, what's wrong? Mm. Just one well, thank second. You, oh. Okay. We can see now. Oh, perfect. I'm perfect. sorry for, for a slight delay. So the topic is management of peripheral nerves combat injuries. Um well per gunshot wound of peripheral nerves is a separate type of combat injury caused by a projectile from a firearm, uh, air gun, or other type of guns. So the relevancy of the topic is, is next. First, uh, we need to admit that uh, now, uh, in recent decades, there has been a significant evolution of ammunition, um, which cause massive uh, destruction, destructions of tissue, especially of our limbs and uh, affecting peripheral nerves. Due to the use of helmets and uh, body armor, limbs become one of the most vulnerable, vulnerable parts of the body. And uh, most of these patients are uh, disabled, disabled after the trauma and has a severe psychological disorders. So what are the features of uh, modern warfare? Up to 75% of damage is caused by, uh, by different agents. Uh, I mean, um, just one second, one second, one second. In most cases, it is a combined injury to the extremities and it occurs in 70% of cases. Uh, injuries are often complicated by uh, critical bleeding and shock, and also injuries are possible in areas clearly uh, distant from the immediate site of the wound. Just one second, next. A uh, few words about epidemiology. The number of wounded with damaged nerves during the First World War uh, ranged from 1.5% to 5%. During the Second World War, it ranged from 8 to 10%. But uh, in modern wars, the number of wounded with damaged nerves ranges from 9 to 25%. Uh, also, there is approximately the same rate of, of lesions of the upper and lower extremities, and more than half of victims remain disabled and up to 80% are unfit for further military service. Uh, so what is the nature of gunshot wounds? Uh, one factor injuries, it is uh, like uh, violations of tissue integrity from direct action of the projectile and multi uh, multifactored injuries. It's rising from the a direct action of shells, blast waves, explosive gases, secondary shells, and of course, uh, thermal uh, explosion from high temperature. It is determined that the peculiarity of gunshot nerve injuries is the unevenness of the lesion in different areas at different levels in different anatomical areas. So this every patient uh, requires personalized approaches to the treatment. Just, yeah, next one. So what are the features of uh, explosive lesions? Um, a distinctive feature of most explosive injuries 
in the combination of complete or incomplete separation of one or more limb segments, the presence of large tissue defects with local burns, open and closed bone fractures, general contusion and injuries, and of course, both ammunition fragments and secondary wounding shells. The results of surgical treatment of peripheral nerves, gunshot wounds are often unsatisfactory, which is primarily due to the extent of damage of the nerve trunk, the presence of intratrunk scarring tissue, impaired microcirculation due to frequent injuries of the uh, vessels and uh, nerves vessels and significant damage of, uh, to surrounding uh, soft tissues. Also, we need to mention it's very important that is, as a result of successful treatment of this category of wounded, the combat order of the active army is replenished with a big number of most experienced fighters. And conversely, the failure of medical rehabilitation of effective servicemen, civilians, um, is a heavy burden for uh, disabled people. Um, I want to present the ratio of the upper and lower extremities. It is uh, our experience. So uh, the percentage of upper ex extremities um, injuries is approximately 47%. And lower extremities is uh, 53%. As we can see, and as it uh, was mentioned before, uh, the statement is real. So we have uh, almost equal ratio for the upper and lower extremities. And here you can see the ratio of nerve damage and gunshot wounds to the extremities by, uh, the, uh, by the nerves. Uh, the most often uh, we can see the injury of sciatic nerve, common peroneal nerve, brachial plexus and ulnar nerve. Again, it is our experience. So to, um, for adequate restoration of loss functions, um, we need to provide an adequate neurophysiological diagnosis, diagnosis of the level, type of the damage, the, de the degree of pathological process. And um, uh, it depends on the choice of surgical treatment and uh, some possibilities of uh, conservative therapy. So what are the basic requirements for surgical access? First, is the possibility of sufficient examination of the nerve at the level of damage in the proximal and distal di di um, directions. <clears throat> the ability to expand the operating field, if possible, minimal traumatization, minimal cosmetic defect, and um, maximum preservation of intraneural anastomosis with the selection of damaged and intact nerve bundles. It's very important. So here you can see the uh, macro macroscopic intrapolational examination of um, some examples of gold standards of peripheral nerve uh, surgery. is uh, nerve suturing or neurography neurolysis of the structures of the nerves or a nerve, nerve grafting. Also, it is uh, widely used such methods like nerve transfer. Uh, we'll talk about this later. And uh, I think it's quite important to uh, name all the conditions of performance surgery for traumatic injuries of peripheral nerves. Um, in my opinion, it's very important that uh, the surgeon who provides this uh, intervention has um, have to be really experienced one because his mastery of microsurgical techniques, his perfect knowledge of the anatomy um, will, uh, will give an adequate and good result after the surgical treatment. Also, it is clear statement that uh, uh, operating microscope is required with microsurgical instruments, suturing material, uh, and um, 
adequate equipment for intraoperative electrodiagnostics, and of course, of course, adequate anesthesia. So, uh, I just uh, I want to tell just few words about the methods of additional research. Of course, it's clinical neurological using uh, scales. Uh, neurophysiological complex of preoperative diagnosis. It is EMG and ENMG, electromyography, electroneuromyography, uh, intraoperative diagnostics, and of course, neuroimaging methods of research. So what are the features of conscious wounds of nerves? First is preservation of the anatomical integrity of the nerve with complete loss of its function. It can be possible. Uh, the second is significant nerve defects and of course, polystructural injuries because gunshot injury, it is, it is not an, like an isolated injury of the nerve. Of course, we have um, very severe defects of soft tissues, blood vessels, muscles, etc., etc., and of course, uh, bone fractures very often. And of course, a significant percentage of gunshot wounds uh, accompanied with severe pain syndromes. Let me just tell you uh, that uh, according to our personal data, the pain was manifested in 78% of injuries and uh, the intensity was from 5 to 10 according to VAC scale, a visual analog scale. Uh, of course, nerve damage complicated by neuropathic pain, amputation pain syndrome, phantom pain syndrome, and complex regional pain syndromes, uh, which are quite common. Also, we use uh, the method of surgical treatment like implantation of long-term electrical stimulation of peripheral nerves. Here is the, our Ukrainian system, which is used maybe, I think, more than 15 years. Um, here you can see the example of neurolysis of brachial plexus and simultaneous implantation of this uh, uh, long-term electrostimulating system. So what are the indications for the use of this uh, electrical stimulation technique for gunshot wounds of peripheral nerves? First, um, this is um, the patient it is indicated for patients with persistent neuropathic pain syndrome, also consequences of damage to the humeral plexus by the type of excent medis, uh, consequences of obsolete trauma of the brachial plexus. Um, it's useful for patients with positive results of reconstructive surgeries, which was made, which were uh, made before in the early stages of treatment. And when we want to see the expansion of the functional capabilities uh, of the loss function of limbs by straightening the function of certain nerves, nerves. And also we can use it in some cases uh, after cases after some insufficient decompression, which was made before. Here is a test simulator. We can use it for the programming of uh, the different, uh, we can choose some amplitude parameters, voltage parameters, uh, personally, individually for every patient. And few words about the advantage, uh, advantages of this system. Of course, it's uh, targeted simulation of selective structures, painless stimulation, non-contact stimulation, and uh, it is very uh, very convenient for patients because they can stimulate themselves at home without any uh, need to attend some, um, some hospitals and some departments to stay there in hospital for the stimulation. So let me show you the results of surgeries for gunshot wounds to the nerves. Just I'll tell you a few words that unfortunately... Uh, bad results and moderate results uh, was achieved in ulnar nerve, a gunshot wound, and a common mm -hmm. prone nerve. The total number of patients is uh, was 138. And on this table, you can see 
the results of neurolysis combined with long-term electrostimulation. I want uh, to mention that uh, all the patients uh, uh, who underwent the uh, method of long-term electrical stimulation uh, achieved uh, better results of restoring the movement function and, um, and the function of uh, sensitivities of sensation. Yeah, and let me show you uh, the most um, significant <laughs> results of <laughs> our uh, some cases <laughs> after <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, here is an example of the nerve grafting technique. Uh, it was a gunshot injury to <laughs> radial, <laughs> radial <laughs> nerve and, and ulna nerve. This is just like a protocol of the surgery. Uh, there are the photos after the uh, surgical intervention. And here are the intraoperational photos. You can see um the serial nerve vesicles for um for closing the gap the gap between uh the distal and proximal stumps of uh, of medial uh, radial nerve and ulnar nerve and here which is very important seven months after operation you can see quite good results of uh, Wrist uh, extension, sure. which is quite good result due to the severe trauma. The next one is a, an example of muscle transfer. It is uh, uh, it was a, a gunshot injury to radial nerve, and we use the transfer of uh, pronator teres muscle to extensor carpi radialis brevis also palmaris longus muscle to extensor um, politis longus and flexor carpi ulnaris to extensor dictorum communis. Again, it is the scheme of the operation, uh, stages of um, muscle transfer, just immediate photos after the surgery. And uh, I want to mention that the great advantage uh, advantage of muscle transfers that we can see uh, the the result on the early stages on the early terms after the surgery. Yes. So as you can see, yes. very yes. nice yes. results after yes. one yes. and a half yes. months yes. after yes. provided yes. surgery. Yes. So let me show a few more cases this is distal nerve transfer of median nerve just um, it was an in injury gunshot injury of radial nerve especially of its uh, uh, posterior interos interosseous nerve so we made um, a transfer a branch from medial nerve it is branch for a flexor carpi radialis to posterior interosseal nerve and also simultaneous muscle transfer uh, of pronator teres to extensor carpi radialis brevis was performed. Um, I want to mention that uh, for the last maybe five years, three uh, from three to five years, uh, we, we really uh, um, enjoy this method because when we have an injury on the proximal side of the limb, especially gunshot injury, uh, traction type injury, uh, the standard methods like uh, gold standards, like just nerve um, nerve grafting or uh, nerve transfer on the proximal side um, can be not effective. So. As for the distal nerve transfers, uh, here, here you can see uh, the intraoperational photos. And you remember that we provided also, in addition, the muscle transfer. Here you can see this just one day post-operation, post-operational results. 
the slight movement of the wrist, dorsal extension, 1.5 months after operation. So here is six months after operation. You can see the extended range of movements and 1.5 years after the surgery. Very nice function restoration. All the range of movements of the wrist is present. Another example of distal nerve transfer, it was a gunshot injury to ulnar nerve, especially the deep branch of ulnar nerve, and we provided the interior interosseous nerve transfer for the deep branch of ulnar nerve. So here you can see the intraoperational photos, macro. Uh, also one more example of distal nerve transfer. Um, it was an injury of radial nerve, uh, gunshot injury, and we made um, uh, radial nerve branch of extensor carpi radialis brevis for, uh, for the anterior interosseous nerve. So I'm sorry, it was the injury of median nerve, median nerve. Here you can see the intraoperational photos and the results, the result is after six months post-operation. These, mu these muscles are innervated by medial nerve. So uh, again, I think excellent results. So a few words about lower extremities. This is an example for distal nerve transfer after the injury of uh, tibial, uh, of uh, common parallel nerve. So uh, we made a distal nerve transfer and simultaneous uh, tra transfer of muscle of uh, muscul uh, musculus tibialis posterior. So again, intraoperational photos and results. It Quite is three months after the operation. Just a slight movement of the, of the foot. I want to mention that it was a total loss of uh, movements before the surgery. It is six months after the surgery and nine months after the surgery. So again, quite a good result. And uh, last one, last example of uh, the gunshot injury to a femoral nerve. We provided nerve transfer of obturatorius nervous and uh, simultaneous uh, muscle transfer of semitendinosus muscle to quadriceps. So here are the intraoperational photos, and uh, we are still waiting for the results because the surgery was performed just one uh, week ago. And just stages and photos after the surgery. So um, what are the conclusions? Uh, surgical interventions for gunshot wounds to peripheral nerves can be delayed, and they have to have to be carried out Aren't, uh, only in specialized uh, institutions. The results of surgical treatment of gunshot wounds of the peripheral nerve system are generally worse than in comparison to other type of injuries. Nerve damage as a result of gunshot wounds in 78% of cases are accompanied by severe pain syndromes. Long-term term electrical stimulation of damaged nerves is an effective method of uh, providing adequate re regeneration in injuries such as exonet mesis. Again, long-term epidural electrical stimulation is an effective method of controlling pain, especially in patients with complex regional pain syndromes and phantom pain syndromes. And also uh, the use of this method of long-term electrical stimulation of nerves and plexuses 
um, provides a significant improvement of the quality of life of such patients. And the last one, the use of distal nerve transfer techniques is promising an effective method of treatment of proximal gunshot wounds of the extremities. I'm very grateful for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tsambalik. Um, I'm Dr. Samar Hoz. I'm originally from Iraq. I'm now practicing in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, uh, the last presentation was really interesting. I want to uh, know the schedule from Volarex. Um, should I start or we will have discussion at the end? What do you prefer? So now it's like we uh just every speaker to like give all the presentations. So now it's time for the Q and A questions and answers, and uh, you may proceed for your topics or you want to uh give a group discussions or any person want to give yeah. an opinion or yeah. Okay, so I will uh, uh, give the presentation in a, in a short time. I think it will take seven minutes. Then we can have a discussion. I have uh, some comments, and I want to ask Dr. Adnan, Dr. Son, and Yoroslav about uh, their presentation too. Uh, if it's okay, I will share this slide. Slides, okay. Yes, perfect. Yes. Okay. Great. So uh, while preparing for this presentation, it's uh, like three uh, direction in mind always and while presenting about these topics. The first is the trauma surgeon that want to manage the really urgent case. The second pathway is the researcher that uh, has the desire to document uh, all the data, uh, or, uh, anything about these uh, the disastrous injuries to, so he can make analysis in the best way possible. And the third one is the supporter for peace in general. And um, I'm from Iraq, so I have a, a, a really tough experience with the trauma in general. And I think I'm from Baghdad initially, Baghdad is the hottest spot around the world regarding injuries, civilian injury, military. For military and civilian, I think it's a quite mixed according to where the battle is. Uh, nowadays, most of these are within cities, so these are more mixed injury. And I'm, I goes with the, um, Dr. Adnan, I think, uh, that uh, yeah, there's a difference between civilian and military. I think the major difference with this type of injury is the, uh, the military injury is more expected. Uh, so the patient, so the victim kind of protect excuse me, Samer, himself. Excuse me, Samer, your, your slides are not moving. Yeah, I, I, I will move the, to the next slide in a few seconds. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I'm sorry about that. No problem. So, um, I always start my presentation with this slide. Uh, it's the gratitude to our teachers. And yeah, in general, I'm not here to discuss the principles of uh, head injury, uh, uh, the different type, primary injury, second, secondary injury. Um, and uh, I think, yeah, there is a lot of illustration demonstrate how variable this type of injury can be. And uh, what I will focus on mainly Two main topics, blast-related injury. I think this is the focus of military civilian um, injuries because these are the most common as compared to other types during war. And also, uh, let's say, sharing a different experience from Iraq with canisters. So blast-induced traumatic brain injury is a, a huge uh, incident. Uh, the, the main difference from the regular traumatic brain injury is that the mass casualty is that the, there is several patients presenting at the same time need the same treatment. And you have limited uh, surgeons and limited ORs, whatever the uh, center, however it's well equipped, still 
there, there is a maximum limit. So um, uh, we, we will uh, focus on three or four main topics about how to how we define damage control surgery and the concept and the concept of neurosurgery, how to uh, devise a tailored tri triaging system. I think that triaging system that we use is quite uh, unique uh, and its unique uh, uniqueness uh, come from the continuous modifications over the time. And I mean, uh, unique because it's, uh, it's the thing that we use locally. I will share it, and um, everybody have his uh, out, uh, how have his um, uh, opinion, and mod can modify accordingly. Um, and yeah, let's go with the. Uh, we will present the blast traumatic in brain injury uh, in general. There is an increase uh, in the uh, incidence. Uh, more terroristic attacks, civilian military, we discussed this, and the mass casualty is the main uh, or is the critical issue here. Uh, um, our, um, there is um, the car bombing is the causative agent, and usually these are heavy exclusives. This is from Iraq experience for sure, and may be applied in general for explosions. And yeah, we have a lot of losses. The difference in blast injury that there is the three waves. There is a primary injury for uh, uh, around the blast area. Then this, the secondary injury from the sharpenel that pushed away and may affect many people. And the third type is the tertiary injury, which, which may include that the patient is just pushed uh, away to be hit to the floor or to, to, the, to the buildings. So we present this um, uh, based on experience from the deadliest suicidal double car bomb attack in Iraq. And yeah, the incident was in 2009 and um, it's uh, two suicidal truck bombs and the victims were 152 and are, are dead and 50, 520 injured. I think the 520 is the th is the real number that we are dealing with. Uh, in our uh, center in uh, Baghdad, it's the main trauma center uh, uh, all over Iraq. And this is what we have. We receive, that's the main point. We receive 75 patients at the same time to the emergency department. After initial resuscitation, 19 died and 56 were admitted to the hospital. Those were, were either treated by surgery, 39 patients have surgery within three or four days. So we have continuous OR, uh, uh, OR <clears throat> work for the these three to four days. And others are treated conservatively, either in the regular world or, or in the neural intensive care. And the final outcome, was um, a variable, there is a 17 death and the good outcome is 31. So uh, if, we, if we had in mind that those patients, that those sample are the less injured patient because they have the opportunity to, to survive until they reach the hospital. So we can imagine how disastrous these type of injuries and yeah, I will not go through the characteristic that we already study, but we, but just to highlight that there is a lot of modification, even it's not a decompressive craniectomy only, what's uh, the subtypes of decompressive craniectomy according to the lesion. Uh, if we have a brain tissue out, you usually remove this herniated brain, but it's according to where it comes. So we analyze that also for the whole 75 uh, patients. And we, we also do a subgroup analysis. However, the result for subgroup analysis are not quite significant, I think because of the variability of, of uh, sample. So this, this one of the main concepts that I want to focus on is that we, we already know that there is a damage control surgery in the, in the management of a trauma, but as it's applied to neurosurgery, we think that it will uh, consider six or five or seven main steps according to uh, the patient and should be individualized in general. 
uh, elevation of the press fracture removal of, this, of the accessible shell. I think Dr. Sun fo uh, uh, focus on this. Uh, hematoma evacuation, cleaning and debridement, then hemostasis. If it's a dural uh, repair possible or not through primary uh, repair, or sometimes we leave it for a second or uh, for a later surgery. And uh, yeah, that's the discussion. The triaging system, I think that's the unique one that uh, we have uh, like a, a, div, uh, a team with different uh, tasks. It's different from the regular team. It, this team uh, just started once we know that there is a blast injury and we will receive a mass uh, uh, casualty or receive many patients, at least uh, 10 patients. So we make this uh, so in the emergency department, we will have two neurosurgeon and four resident receiving the patient do, doing the ABCDs, uh, the uh, initial resuscitation because this is very critical. Next step to the CT scan. At the CT scan, there is not only a radiologist, but there is also a neurosurgeon in the CT scan to take an immediate decision. That's very important because from the CT scan unit, the patient will be either drifted to other hospital uh, uh, because they have more serious associated injuries than the head injury or go to the next levels inside the hospital for admission. And the ICU also that's different. It's not for, for anesthetist only or a neurointensivist. We have an, uh, a neurosurgeon should be in the ICU and two residents. Uh, the, the idea is to continuous triaging and deciding what's the post resuscitation GCS and then decide what, what's the patient that should stay in the OR, sometimes the CT scan indication of, of surgery. However, the GCS after a station not improved, still GCS3, so the sur surgery will be canceled. That will make the priority for the patient in, in the best way possible. I, I, I think uh, all of you understand that this is uh, working with limited resources. And I also stress that limited resources will be everywhere because this is unexpected type of trauma and will be present in uh, many patients at the same time. In the OR, we have three OR uh, uh, running together, each OR with a neurosurgeon resident. We emphasize the, the presence of a neurosurgeon at each step of the whole uh, a, a triaging system and especially in each OR because in trauma you need to take instant decision to sacrifice this to make a frontal lobectomy or not uh, to arrest uh, venous sinus uh, bleeding these are uh, uh, sh should um, have a momentary uh, decision and should be treated uh, as soon as possible so we suggest uh, the presence of a neurosurgeon as much as possible in each uh, case for for that experience, we have uh, four days of uh, in, uh, three or uh, running at the same time, and we operate on thirty nine patients. I think I think that's one of the uh, toughest experience that can uh, um, occur. And yeah, uh, I will not go through the details. I think Dr. Adnan uh, and Dr. Son present some cases, some interesting cases, and it's quite variable. And that's uh, about the blast injury. That's what I want to discuss. Just to uh, give you an idea, I, I want to share this um, different type. Usually it's not a high velocity because it's a tear gas canister. This should be uh, used uh, for the against demonstrations, so it's also civilian, but in Iraq in before a few years, we have uh, anti-demonstration tear gas uh, injuries, and we have 41 patients uh, injured uh, with head injury due to tear gas canister. It's a rare experience. I think it's the first reported around the world, and 10 of those patients have completely intracranial tear gas canister, which is a quite uh, strange. And yeah, this type of injury, the tear gas canister, how it entered the skull, how it's caused this penetrating uh, injury, it's a, it's a disaster actually. And how to manage 
such a huge mass inside the brain. You can imagine it's a, it's not a regular bullet. It's a bullet by at least 10 to 20 times of the size. And there is a, 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 it was a tough experience and tough decision. Sometimes actually a few patients, we do not remove it at all because it's on, it's on the torcule. While those patients, no, we can remove it. Even the CT scan for neurosurgeon, I think this CT scan is strange. What's this foreign body that is not metallic, obviously, however, it penetrates the skull. So um, it was a different experience. And the cause, I think, after investigation, it was um, a, a military type of tear gas canister or tear gas bomb. So this type of weapon should be not viewed as a less lethal weapon or less uh, serious weapon. This has just a variety of injuries and how can put it. Something interesting, I don't know if it's helpful or not. And for Ukraine, we have in Iraq, the, I don't know, uh, some of the non-governmental organization built this, the Iraq body count, and it, it summarized all the injury according to what weapon use, if it's bullet or blast, if it's what's the area in Iraq. And this can be very important for future research and analysis for the injuries. And yeah, just a few concepts that the brain tissue out concept, I think all the surgeon managing the trauma know this is a very common thing to face, but uh, and we find there is no much about it in the literature. I, I would suggest to uh, analyze it more according to your series and your centers. And yeah, um, the research thing, that's what I want to, uh, why, or, or why at, uh, I already put in the beginning of presentation that, yeah, sometimes you, you want to be the researcher that you, you want to analyze every type of injury to make impact for the future. And sometimes you need to be the surgeon that's uh, managing those patients in the emergency setting. Our duty in life to support each other and make the next generation even better. I think, I hope this will be helpful for some people. Uh, however, it's very simple concepts and thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Haas, for a very amazing presentation presentations and the case and always like very nice like conversation and I am your fan club <laughs> especially vascular okay so um um does anyone have a questions please feel free to open your cameras and ask of their horse or um the previous speakers of questions um can I comment Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Okay. So, first of all, thank you for your presence and thank you for the panelists. And thanks for John for making this uh, happen. I think discussion always important for everybody. And once you present your work and see other uh, um, presentations, you will have a new idea always. Uh, if I can ask, I will put just a question for each of the presenters. Uh, if Dr. Adnan available, I will ask about uh, the early versus late presentation in another way, the distance of the treating center from the uh, injury area or from the combat area, let's say, what's the difference and um, <clears throat> how, is the, how, how is that different according to his experience, Dr. Son? Uh, yes, I think the three questions that he put, it's very evident. Uh, however, I want to ask his opinion, personal opinion about resection versus decompression, because I think it's very individualized and some surgeons have the intention to do decompression more. And uh, for Yoroslav, uh, I will ask what's his background of anatomy, because I think that that peripheral nerve surgery need a le another level of anatomy and a person of vast interest uh, uh, in peripheral nerve. So any uh, one of the available um, uh, presenter, uh, I'll be ready to hear uh, your comments and thank you, Bullerx. Thank you. Hi. 
Can I check the? I will answer the question for Dr. Samir. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, first of all, that uh, time of presentation for our causality is different. We have uh, a remote site of injury, which were uh, maybe six or more hours uh, from our uh, institute. We are a referral hospital, not a first line hospital for these causalities. And uh, we are not a military hospital. We are just a referral hospital in Sana'a. We are uh, mostly, we are uh, receiving patients from uh, uh, terrorist bombing uh, inside Sana'a or from airstrike inside Sana'a, which are close to us. That's most uh, patients arrive to us in an early way, uh, in our or two hours or referring from uh, uh, nearby hospital. So there is no difference between late presentation and early presentation uh, in our study. But uh, there is a similar uh, military uh, studies was done uh, in Iraq, which said the uh, first line uh, medical health services will have impacted in the outcome of patient uh, first uh, time for resuscitation and uh, do uh, ABC for resuscitation of the patient where uh, improve the outcome of uh, patient uh, survival rate. And uh, uh, believe me that uh, the severe cases maybe will, uh, will not reach our institute or the first line uh, primary health. They will expand in the site of injury. We have no information about these cases, so to include it in the study. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Dr. Son, are you with us? Alexander, I'm here. Yes, you have a, uh, you have a question uh, concerning uh, resection and decompression. Yes. What is uh, pre more preferable? I think uh, uh, resection and decompression is uh, Individually, and uh, first is patient condition. First, if you have patient condition with uh, uh, glass uh, co uh, coma scale uh, eleven, ten, and uh, down, I think only decompressive, not plastic. Primary, primary plastic, because this patient have um, good chance um, for um, morbidity and mortality. And uh, plastic, we uh, in these cases, uh, in these cases, we <coughs> plan it uh, secondary. And about maybe about um, bone and metal fragments. Uh, if you see uh, first patient, uh, we don't remove metal uh, fragment uh, because this metal fragment was in uh, another site and uh, uh, surgical trauma maybe. Uh, more than our uh, surgery. And uh, second, second uh, patient. Uh, now we have only two, two patients in our clinic with uh, uh, combat trauma. And second patient, uh, if you see, uh, have uh, some, um, bone uh, fragments near uh, vena labe. And I uh, think not necessary to remove this fragment near vena labe. Mm -hmm. And uh, more important, the compressive and the uh, gematoma remove in this case. case. 
Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, any comments? So. Um, I have a question. <laughs> yes, so, um, go on, go on. do you have, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what is the, what the, what is the P-operative anti antibiotics that you usually give to the patients before you uh, operate? In the questions, what? this question. Um, what is the over? What is the anti antibiotics that you usually mm. give the patients before you do the operations? Okay, what a uh, this question for me. Um, uh, and any any ones or ah, you can hear that you know I mean different yeah. My opinion uh, usually is necessary um, and prolonged uh, antibiotic therapy in this patient and intraoperatively and preoperate and postoperate. So, so okay, uh, Dr. Uh, Hotz, are you satisfied? <laughs> uh, yeah, for, for sure, uh, it depends on the case. As uh, Dr. Sun said, it, it's quite individualized, uh, but still there is some uh, surgical trends. It depends on the school, let's say. Uh, uh, for From our experience, I think it's more related to the velocity of injury. Some the extremes are, are the extreme are less are of less risk of injury. I mean, the high velocity tangential, we will give a little uh, uh, antibiotic for one day or two day maximum. It will be at a very low risk. And and uh, the, the other extreme, we have a special form called the gravitational bullet injury, uh, that uh, bullet from the sky. So uh -huh. it's very it's a bullet injury, but a, a very low velocity. Also, this type of injuries, it, it, it depends, but mostly it has no specific indication for antibiotic. We, we are not encouraged to give antibiotic to those. Otherwise, the, let's say the common type of bullet in general, or we, of especially the blast, I mean the shell injuries, are more, let's say, dirty injuries. So yeah, mm -hmm. the antibiotic is quite considered. And as Dr. Son said, it depends on the case. Um, it's your decision uh, at the moment more than a general guideline that uh, I will give antibiotic now or not. I will uh, start with IV antibiotic from before the surgery even loaded. But yeah, in general, the sharpnel injury will require more than bullets. And however, I think the trauma cases, the reports suggested a late abscess uh, incident in, in the old injuries. Yeah, but it depends. So only for a couple of days and uh, it depend on the velocities of the um, points, I, right? I, I, that's what I say by individualized, because sometimes if you if you have a CSF leak or a patient with high risk to be a CSF leak, that's inside the surgery, you know that the dura repair is not enough yeah, you will be encouraged to cover antibiotic. I will I will give the patient at least two weeks antibiotic. Uh, if, if I suspect that, yeah, it's, it will be difficult to for his dura to heal. I don't know the uh, opinion of Dr. Sun. Any questions? Okay, so. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have a small comment, please, uh, about the use of antibiotic in our uh, practice. For uh, penetrating brain injury, we uh, routinely use uh, three antibiotics for anaerobic and aerobic and uh, uh, gram positive, gram negative. We cover these uh, pathogens as the infection rate in our uh, institute or in, uh, in the country is uh, high. And uh, most of the uh, uh, expulsion injuries are dirty, as Dr. Samir said. They are not considered as a clean 
uh, injuries, they are considered as a dirty or uh, contaminated uh, injuries. So we deal with at least for two weeks of uh, covering ground positive, negative, and uh, also anaerobic bacteria. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So it's individuals. Oh. Actually, there's a couple of questions, Rorsch. Do you see them? Uh, do you see the questions? Yeah, let me copy and paste them. Okay. About this oh, uh, epilepsy. Yes, we have uh, our institute or our study. We have about four percent of post uh, post trauma uh, epilepsy, which is uh, late. We are speaking about the late development of epilepsy post uh, six months of injury. We have four percent uh, uh, rate of uh, late epilepsy. Early epilepsy, we already uh, put cover uh, for under give anti epileptic uh, uh, from the time of admission till time of discharge. We will uh, stop uh, the anti-epileptic after six months of uh, discharge if there is no convulsion. If there is uh, another convulsion after six months or after stopping uh, the anti-convulsion, we will uh, uh, prescribe uh, an anti-epileptic anti for life. I hope uh, I answered this question. Yes, thank you. There's a comment by Roman. Uh, what is your usual approach for preventive prescriptions of antibiotics? Oh, yes, answer it. Answer that. Okay, that's, what, that's why we need a moderator. Okay, go ahead, Wallace. Um, another question from a guest, but I don't know, is that the answer or actually he said that the maybe. Is there any the role of the steroid and the TBI? Is that a question? Um, if Dr. Minash, Minasha here, I, I don't know. Is that a question? Oh, I have a question. So, <laughs> okay. Um, um, in what type of case, or do when you going to follow up with the angiogram or CTA brain? Yeah, maybe sometimes it's uh, when in the first CT is really metal like scattering. And I, I don't know, it's I and the, sometimes the lesion is very big, but maybe we have to operate it before we can uh, do perform the angiogram or CTA. But I want to ask like how, uh, when will you going to follow up uh, CT angiograms? Or finding any like vascular injury. So, Valarix, uh, bring the question always to vascular. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, uh, <laughs> I will give my opinion yeah, first and, 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 and see that. that is <laughs> <good thing after. laughs> uh, I'm kidding. So, uh, I, I will give uh, just a, a comment and we'll wait from the panels your, her, their opinion. Um, in, in general, um, to incident in my mind, if it's a bullet near the carotid exactly that the patient I will concern about and I will try to follow him in any way possible. Or the second option is that a patient with vascular injury that I repair intraoperatively, some intra intraoperative bleeding and in trauma and Sometimes the cause of death intraoperatively, usually from venous side, not from arterial side. It's rare from arterial side, but if it's from arterial side, and I will manage it in any way, whether cauterization, suturing, or clipping, whatever, this patient will will have a a, a different pathway for follow up. Uh, what I want to say that the patient who is who are victims for blast injury in general, the sharpenal. It's difficult to follow them. And there is a variety of injury. A lot of shells are still in the body. Uh, MRI not always uh, possible. So yeah, unless they are, they are, they have 
uh, a new presentation from the old injury, so we will not follow them. Um, I, I see a lot of uh, uh, pseudo aneurysm uh, research now they are reporting the cases but i think in the in, in our setting with the mass injuries and a little a lot of patients it's difficult to follow them uh, and to find if there is a possibility of pseudoaneurysm unless the patient is presented to you and putting in mind that those patients those victims usually and most often are not from the region of the hospital the region that the hospital drain so they are from all over, uh, all over the country. And yeah, by this incident, they present to your hospital. So they are not living near from you and their follow-up will be usually at a different institute. Yeah, I see your point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have to, have to listen to the people who have that experience. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. And the other idea from other speakers? <laughs> I have uh, some comment for uh, concerning uh, the uh, CT angiography. Uh, we usually perform it in patients uh, with the uh, skull base uh, fracture in the area of condyle because there is a, always a threat of dissection of uh, vertebral artery. It's, uh, it's obligatory. What we do, it's, uh, it's a my small, small comment in addition to uh everything was symmetrical so thank you so if they have a dissections are you will you going to prescribe the anti-platelet or coagulant <laughs> after <laughs> you do the surgery or still the bleeding I'm, yeah the next question <laughs> uh, if we just find that because yeah it can happen right So, okay, maybe let us finish. Yes, very good, uh, uh, Doc. I'd like to thank you for getting all this together. And I'd like to thank Morlix for moderating uh, and, and to all the speakers. Uh, and we look forward to doing more webcasts with the neuro Ukrainian neurosurgical community. So- Thank you. Thank you good. for the thank invitation you. also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your contribution to a Ukrainian victory. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Right. Stick around. We're not going to finish. Thank you. Thank you.